button, and we're probably now streaming. I, I see yeah. it. That's what it says, now streaming. Hey, friends of Marin County Bicycle Coalition. Uh, my name is Christopher Kaiser, and welcome to MCBC's Lost Summer Celebrity Cycling Series, or whatnot, what have you. This is a bonus episode. We thought we finished last week uh, with Gary Fisher, and uh, we've been having some conversations with uh, our friend Peter Stetna, who's helped us out in a few other events, and uh, he said he'd be available to come on and talk about whatnot and what have you. So we're going to do that today. But before that, I'm going to kick over to Tom Boss to tell you a little bit about why we are doing this Lost Summer Series. Tom Boss, how are you, man? I'm doing good. Uh, thanks, Christopher. Um, yeah, so we, uh, like a lot of organizations, the COVID pandemic um, put a damper on our events, which are major fundraisers for us uh, and for the work that we do to expand and enhance our trail and bicycle uh, network here in the county. So we put this, um, uh, we have this great giveaway going, which ends on uh, Monday. We're giving away a um, specialized uh, Pro Carbon Diverge, which is donated by Mike Spikes, the 2021 version, uh, as well as a, a, a kit from Velocio, one of our sponsors. Easton is offering, I believe, a wheel set, crank set, and a cockpit. Uh, and then we have or not uh, uh, doing a, a, an apparel package. Uh, and and to get in on this, you need to go to marinbike.org forward slash lost summer. For as little as ten dollars, you get a shot at uh, at one of these uh, great prizes. And it and uh, most of the money goes to MCBC and the work we're doing to make your ride uh, better. But uh, twenty five percent is going to go to two organizations helping to fight COVID here in our community. That's the Canal Alliance and the West Marin Senior Services. Thank you, Tom. Uh, again, if you are watching this, you're a bicycle enthusiast, uh, particularly if you live in Marin County and you ride a bicycle, you benefit from the efforts of the Marin County Bicycle Coalition. So please contribute. If you're not certain uh, what MCBC is all about, go to MC, or marinbike.org and, and have a look at all that. But you're not here to talk or listen to Tom and I jabber about donating. Uh, we want to talk to Peter. Uh, Peter Stetna has a long and quite impressive cycling career. His Palmaris are, are equally impressive. Uh, he's a young man still, and he, he's had a bit of a career change, and that's why we're having him here today. Peter is talking to us, I believe, from Santa Rosa, California. Peter, how are you, sir? Um, I'm doing good. I think you guys <laughs> need to fix the, the name because that was a very, that was a huge mouthful. That's like when I was on Team Garmin, Team Slipstream presented by Garmin Chipotle Transitions, Amateur Pro Elite Development Team. Like, you guys got to work yeah. on the name of this thing. The <laughs> but, um, well, you know, the, I, the, I will you can also... pronounce it as Micbic. You can just say MCBC, oh, that's way better. Just Micbic. Yeah. There we yeah. Go. Um, and I will also say I'm humbled to go right after Gary Fisher. I mean, it's uh he's like my sensei in the mustache game so you know i'm, I'm just trying to keep <laughs> I, up actually, as i was looking at you i was thinking <laughs> it's like we just we, we flipped back to uh 30 years ago for gary yeah so um no it's great to be here thanks for having me guys absolutely did you ride your bike today i did yeah i just uh i just got back so i'm i'm hydrating with a non-alcoholic beer and a la croix at the same time i'm double fisting um it's hot out. It's humid. It's kind of, yeah. I'm, I'm not used to the sea level. I've been in Tahoe at altitude getting ready for some upcoming objectives and the air is so bad up there. And we saw there was blue skies in Santa Rosa. So came back down the mountain. Well, uh, you alluded to those objectives and uh, I want to get back to that later, but uh, I'm guessing you watched the stage of the Tour de France this morning. I did. Yeah, okay. Fun. Spoiler alert. If you haven't watched today's stage yet, folks, you go ahead and turn this off and watch us later on YouTube. Uh, yeah. What'd you think of today's stage? It was good. Um, you know, it's uh, definitely thought a breakaway was going to stick, which it did. Uh, that just that day had breakaway written all over it after yesterday's mountain. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad and happy to see uh, Ineo salvage it. You know, I think uh, if Carpaz can keep that, um, that mountains jersey, that's, that's a great, uh, you know, making, uh, making lemonade out of lemons kind of situation. And uh, Mihao is uh, one of the nicest guys in the peloton so for him to get that um it was great i'm glad uh Karapaz didn't pimp him for it because you know Karapaz, <laughs> her, you know he helped Karapaz take the jersey um so deserving um they threw gravel in the mountain stage that's awesome i mean it was like five minutes of gravel on the rolling terrain 
It did Richie know. Port in though, didn't Richie it? Richie still managed to flat. <laughs> I mean, I, I was teammates with Richie last year. I mean, the dude hates rough surfaces. He's, he doesn't dry it off road at all. So um, it just, it's horrible and funny that it happened to him of all people. Um, but you know what? He plowed through it, chased back on, um, enjoying watching the rise of Sep. He's an amazing guy. Um, I know him. Um, it's, it's been a great tour. It's been so good to just have normal drama right now because we have so much other drama going on in California specifically too with fires and COVID and rolling blackouts. And so the fact that it's just tour drama, it's like, it's like a little escape every morning. So. Yeah, truly. Do you, uh, do you miss it? Yeah. Yes and no. Um, you know, when it was starting, it's like, oh, I wish, you know, I, I wish I was in another one. I would have loved to do one more tour. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, I'm so smitten with, with gravel and what I've done. I'm, I'm, I'm overall, I'm, I'm so much happier in this realm. Um, I don't miss the crashes and knowing that stress inside the peloton. I mean, you are literally riding scared a lot of the time when guys are willing to risk everything for a single corner. Um, <clears throat> I do miss the high alpine stages and the pinnacle of road cycling you know which is that uh so it's yeah it's, it's a complicated but yes i i i miss it but i'm I'm okay where i'm at too yeah it's funny that you say you miss it a little bit but then you appreciate where you are you know uh you and i met uh at the giro d'italia the year that you helped out um rider mm -hmm. uh get his victory uh <laughs> and that becomes such a part of your life going to the grand tours and uh, you get a little bit of FOMO when you realize everybody's going. And yeah. then you see a couple hot days or a couple miserable wet days. And you're like, yeah, I just had a cappuccino in my kitchen. That was pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, there's, there's other objectives and there's, there's so many cool things to do on bikes right now. So I, I, I want to do all the things. And right now I'm doing a new thing and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So, um, well, let's transition to that. You're, you're, you're riding the wave. You're at the, the avant-garde of this new thing. Uh, you've gone full on privateer and yeah. you're doing gravel events galore. Uh, tell us a little bit your, why you decided to do that and, uh, and, and how it's going. Yeah. I mean, I've been pretty public about, uh, why I went to gravel. It's just, you know, I saw, <clears throat> I gotta, I gotta attend, um, couple gravel races last year for for my road team and um you know I, I pushed them to let me in and uh we could see the um the aftermath of that was it made sense um I just realized the aftermath, that, you mean the aftermath of winning the biggest uh gravel event of them all next to Kansas uh for yeah. the uninitiated uh this little climber dude slayed the field to win the Belgian waffle ride uh, yeah. in a seriously impressive fashion. So he's downplaying <laughs> it, but let me be his little hype man for a second Thanks. here. So um, please, Peter, carry on. But it was a, it was a career defining moment and I, it, I, I fell in love with gravel there. Um, and then uh, DK confirmed it and Leadville, even though it's a mountain bike race, I mean, I, I view it as gravel. It's the same style um, that we all love with gravel. Um, you know, I just, it, it, I, re I had this little epiphany moment. I was like, I think I can make it this a full-time thing and have a lot more fun and, and be unapologetically me on the bike. Um, so I tested the waters with a few sponsors and then it kind of became decision time. You know, the, the road world tour is so traditional and, and stuck in how they want to do things. Um, there weren't any teams really willing to, to let me do a dual program. It was go road or, or strike off on my own. So I kind of decided to strike off on my own. You know, the only team that's doing that is, is EF with uh, Howes and Lockie. Um, and I mean, I had been on that team before I knew them, you know, and it was like, uh, it was just kind of a question of, you know, how it didn't make sense to, for them to even sign me because, you know, they already have Alex and Lockie doing the exact same thing. So it would just be another, you know, feather in the same cap kind of idea. So, um, that was the only option that could have filled what I wanted to do. Um, and it didn't make sense. So I went on my own, um, trial by fire, uh, reinvent myself, uh, learn how to deal with sponsor pitch decks and everything. All, all the moving parts of round the bike business besides riding the bike. Um, and, uh, but it's been fun. I mean, I, I have literally got to create my dream job in cycling 
out of thin air. Um, and and it's, it's been rewarding so far, uh, despite the pandemic. Mm. Well, you've actually, uh, despite the pandemic, but you truly have turned lemons into lemonade. I know it's not been easy for you. Uh, you seem a bit of a social creature, at least you're pleasant when we're around each other. Um, you, you, <laughs> you've had to find new ways to promote yourself and to justify uh, your existence as a cyclist. I mean, it's easy to be a sole cyclist, uh, but to make a living out of it, you have obligations to sponsors and such. And you've really done a heck of a job finding a way of, of blazing new trails and, and whatnot. Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing. Yeah, well, you know, my, my, my whole angle was um, this isn't a retirement tour. And a lot of people still say, oh, you're retired from pro road. And I, I, I kind of correct them. Like, I'm very much a pro cyclist. I came to gravel because these races are, are big enough and they are, um, they, they deserve people to focus on them a hundred percent. Um, not talk about an alt calendar and, you know, B races or anything. So, you know, I'm, I'm not a washed up roadie who's like, you know, just playing on bikes. Like I was very adamant from the get go that I want to have fun and do embrace the bike community that I love and have beers after the finish line and, and party. But I also, I care about going fast. I still train and my, my power numbers, I have watched my power meter and all that. Like I, I want to do well in races too. I mean, I'm 33 and, and, and hungry in that regard. I'm not over the hill physically. So, you know, that's, that's my angle. And that's, um, that's how I want to bring value and help legitimize gravel even more. Although they could do it without me, it's, it's fine. <laughs> but, um, you know, that, that's where I'm at. Um, and then I got a couple races off and then, uh, COVID, uh, messed everything up like everybody. And, and, and it messed all of gravel up too for, for the events, you know, we had, I mean, coming into the spring, I mean, it, there was just so much hype around every event. I mean, you guys know, like our, our <laughs> the local first grasshopper, we had more coverage than the tour of Australia. Yeah, no, like they, they literally cycling news confirmed that there was more clicks on me and Kabush sprinting for the line and the low gap grasshopper than Richie Port winning on Wellonga in the tour down under. And it just shows like the momentum behind gravel and, and then everything got so locked down. And so a lot of people are wondering, you know, is it, can it come back? Can it recover? And I think so. I think that original um, interest is still there. Um, I think once things are permitted, it will go ahead. It doesn't, we don't have that organizing body like the UCI to create that pro riders bubble, you know, cause so we need to wait for um, mass public events to get off the foot again, just like marathons, you know, we're going to be in that boat. So um, in the meantime, um, I guess, it's pretty fresh in my mind at reinventing myself. So I had to do it yet again. Um, and uh, I've, um, I've been working with a couple partners and what we've done is we've created uh, the funnest known time challenges and the fastest known time. So um, for everybody watching, um, FKT is super popular in the running world, right? Uh, FKT stands for the fastest known time. And usually it's, it's not just the Strava KOM, it's, um, you know, you, it's a course that has meaning and, and emotion, and it's a bucket list ride usually. Um, and, you know, trying to establish the course record. And it, for me, that was a way that we could compete separate, but still compete with each other. Um, so uh, currently the White Rim Trail in Moab is the most famous bike FKT in, in my mind. Um, and, I have plans to make an attempt on that in the near future. However, um, there's so many other courses that deserve uh, inspiration and, and promotion um, in my mind. So um, I've looked for courses that kind of fit that mold that what would be a deserving FKT and I want to help establish them and like, you know, this is the rules, you know, rules, but you know, okay, like this is, a self-supported course where you have to carry everything and like filter your own water. This is a, a fully supported where you can have a follow car if you wanted, you know, this is the official start and end point. You have to log it with GPS, um, you know, and just kind of helping bring awareness to that. Um, you know, I can work with um, the organizers of events that haven't happened yet sometimes and kind of, you know, help support them too and bringing awareness to this legendary course that's 
badass that people couldn't do this year. Um, and then uh, it kind of transitioned from there to the funnest known time, which is really how you and, and Tom and everyone watching probably rides a bike, which is, you know, what's fast isn't always fun. I mean, it's fun for me True sometimes that. because I'm competitive, but like at the end of the day, like everyone finds fun different ways, you know? So what's your idea of the funnest known time? Is it, you know, lactic burn and setting PRs or is it, you know, finding swimming holes and eating potato chips mid course or, or anything in between, you know, is if it I, if I can interrupt to that point, talk about swimming holes, if you didn't see Peter's first fastest known time, uh, it was here in Marin County and he jumped in, you're at the ink wells, right? By the, mm -hmm. by the bridge on Sir, Sir Francis yeah. Drake. So yeah. <laughs> please continue no that, that, that's it so you know it's um basically we i went to a few locations and marin was edition number one um so anyone you know with the marin bike coalition watching this uh if you go to let's privateer.com basically there's a course laid out where i wrote it captured a ton of content tips and tricks and you can download the route and you know where to get a coca-cola where to jump in the swimming hole finish at this point um highlights of the ride and you you ride it as you want you can rip the climb if you feel like ripping the climb stop for a swimming break if you feel like that um and it's about you doing you and and riding the way that is the fkt being the funnest known time they all start with f there's a lot of words that start with f that could have known time after it so um but yeah that's <laughs> that's the idea <laughs> so uh, my mind is really cool. cool. <laughs> Tom lives out there by the swimming hole. Tom lives out in uh, Forest Knolls, right by where you jumped in the water. Nice. Yeah. That's a beautiful area. And I, you guys I, hit uh, Bill's Trail on that route, I believe? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, he, he smashed Bill's Trail. <laughs> I love Tom pretends like he's like, did you hit Bill's Trail? Because Bill's, or Tom's got a pretty fast time up Bill's Trail. It's in his backyard. Not but... anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But That's like, like, a, a hero climb, you know? It's It's just shallow enough that like, you actually have to pull the brakes going uphill. So you feel like you're, you feel like, you know, Contador in the tour, like you're real badass. It's like, I'm breaking going uphill. It's, it's one of those hero climbs, you know, where you feel like it's steeper than it is, except then you actually have to save for that stupid climb up to the, the Oh yeah. Up to the antenna. That's the worst bit. Yeah. That was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it is a yeah. kick in the gut. You know, uh, you say that gravel could do without you, but I think that, uh, characters like yourself and Lachlan Morton and Alex Howes, all of you are extremely likable characters. And um, I, I think it really encourages people. It's part of the spirit of the sport uh, that we see you with your glasses off and hanging out and have a burrito and a beer afterwards and smiles. And it's not warriors behind shields plugged into radios and right. stuff that, uh, you know, I, I, I I'm fortunate to know a lot of guys on pro tour, but if I didn't see their faces and talk to them, I would think they're all a bunch of robots. Yep. And, uh, and I definitely don't get a line up on the same race course uh, as the Tour de France riders uh, yeah. and watch them take off while I cover the same course. So I think uh, these events definitely have a lot of legs to them and you're going to see more and more people lining up. I think, I imagine a lot of events are going to end up like Leadville and such where you have uh, race so. starts and stuff um, like that. You know, I think, I think in the U.S., cycling is a participatory sport. It's not a spectator sport in the same regard as Europe. Um, and, I mean, the World Tour, I mean, I did that for my whole life. I mean, a decade in, in the World Tour specifically, and then the U.S. scene before that. I mean, I have the utmost respect for that, but also it is, it's a, a selfish and a, a monk lifestyle, and, and I love riding bikes because of the social aspect and the bike community is so awesome. And there's so many cool people doing riding bikes and doing things around bikes. And um, it's uh, so this is just, yeah, this is, this is where the fun is for me. Um, and you can still go fast and have fun. So um, yeah, it's, it's funny. You, you almost, you know, it's like you have to explain to people that you haven't retired when yeah, a, uh, a 1500 meter or a 5,000 meter, track and field runner transitions and retunes their motors to do 10 Ks and 42 Ks being marathons. Nobody goes, Oh, he's retiring by doing marathons." I'm going to steal that example for the next interview I do. Thank you. That's yeah. It actually it came to me. You, you inspired me, but I was thinking, man, seriously, you got to explain to people that, I mean, it's still 
a serious deal. There's 40 people in the front racing for the podium and 5,000 people behind them there for the t-shirt and the bumper sticker or whatever, you know, yep. so it's, it's no less real. Experience, you know, and well, I mean, in the eyes of the UCI, I am retired. They don't actually see travel <laughs> as an official discipline. So that's fine. I mean, they, but, but you they, know what? they don't need it. <laughs> yeah. so, that, and um, that's a good thing maybe, right? <laughs> still, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a whole nother hour long conversation is, mm -hmm. you know, the UCI and starting a gravel world and all that. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, just, can you imagine having to pay a 150 Swiss franc fine for peeing on the side of the trail during a, an event? <laughs> Hey, let me follow up on something you said earlier, Pete, and you were talking about uh, 2020 was really gearing up to be a big kind of um, elevating gravel to a significant yeah. level and uh, so much excitement and, and, uh, and you and uh, just kind of leading the way on, um, you know, creating teams around this new um, activity. Are you, uh, I, I assume you're talking to other athletes and sponsors and event organizers. Are you sensing that, um, you know, as long as um, we're able to get this, uh, uh, virus under control and people can gather again that we'll just start it right back up mostly where it left off or maybe maybe even uh, evolve to something better and, and bigger um, complicated yes um, I think I think gravel's here to stay I mean there's there's too much excitement behind it and that's how even especially during COVID lockdowns that's more and people more and more people are riding that way so that's going to happen. Um, you know, that said, I have been in touch with many organizers as they create a plan B date, whether or not they cancel, how they're canceling, whether it's, you know, straight up no refunds or, you know, store credit for next year, basically, or full refunds. And, and there's so many different ways. And, you know, the, the organizers have been hit so hard. I mean, this is their livelihood. And a lot of people like, you know, they, they say like, you know, give me my money back. But it's like, these people literally put on mass gatherings for their livelihood and create stoke around the bike. And so they literally can't do that. I mean, this is one side of any, not just bike industry, but this is just a career path that is really struggling. Same with, you know, nail salons. And um, I don't know how many guys are going to have to shut, shut uh, their doors because of this. Um, I think the big the big gravel events are here to stay and there's going to be other event promoters creating things. Um, you know, I have already done a few gravel events this year since COVID. I did uh, two in, in August in Colorado and Wyoming. Um, Utah is also open. So certain states, it's hard, you know, state by state, there's different regulations. Some are more open for business. Um, I have, I'm helping organizers uh, in terms of discussing the best, COVID practices uh, from what I'm seeing because, you know, social media shaming is a whole nother issue. So, you know, from what I've seen and I'm able to uh, uh, understand and assimilate, I think there are certain ways that mitigate, most importantly, the outbreak, but also blowback for, because I, I don't hold it against anyone for trying to get their event off the ground and, and make their ends meet and, and also provide stoke during this time. Um, so there, there's things getting off the ground. And I think next year, Assuming that there's a vaccine, there will be more things off the ground until there's, until there's a vaccine. I think events will continue to happen just on a, a smaller scale. You know, right now it's the, you know, at least in the mountain states, it's the events that are, you know, under 150 people, like very, very local vibe events, mm -hmm. but those are kind of getting the, the green light. Um, so, yeah, I just, you know, I, I hope, um, I hope the organizers that, put on the fun for all of us can weather this storm. Um, and, and I have been pretty adamant in, everyone has different levels of comfort. Um, I invested in a, the van life and the sprinter van so I could be responsible going to events that do get the green light because, you know, that's what I've staked my business model and my career on is, is showing up in, and, you know, being present at these gravel events for my sponsors, for the public, for awareness of riding gravel bikes. Um, so I'm, I have, I, I travel very responsibly at, um, and very COVID conscious in my, and I'm self-contained um, and pretty much most events that are getting the green light, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get to. So um, I've done two events since COVID um, and Belgian Waffle Ride in Cedar City, Utah has the green light in mid-October. Um, and that'll kind of be the, the big gravel event of the fall, I think. Mm, cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's, 
it's funny we're sitting here talking about cycling and all and being in a bit of a fantasy world right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the reality is we, we still have a lot of work to do. Um, but to the point of the event organizers, um, if, if I can offer another metaphor, the, <laughs> the money that I paid towards Lost and Found or to Grinduro mm -hmm. or to Grasshopper, um, those were what get me out on the bike from uh, when the fall weather turns cold and wet. Uh, those are the things that inspire me to get on the bike and keep me from growing this midsection here. And, uh, you know, a lot of people pay for a gym membership and never go to the gym. But uh, I'm going out and riding my bike. And if the event doesn't happen, it still got me out on my bike every day. That's a, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah, and I still want those event organizers to be around. You know, Miguel is, is the example I keep going to because Grasshopper's our back door. But, you know, there's a guy who's a school teacher who started an event series and it became, it was totally renegade series. And now it's, yeah. uh, you know, they, they've got to order tape. I mean, MCBC went through the same thing. You know, you plan an event and you've got permits to pay for. Uh, you've got uh, infrastructure, easy up tents and tables and food to order and everything like that. And all these entry fees go forward to the vendors that you engage to throw an event. And they're also small business people and, like, what are you supposed to give the money back from them all the way back to the, so I know some people can't throw out 150 bucks for an event and say, well, I don't get to do the event, but go out and do the virtual ride, you know, be yeah. part of the, be part of the consciousness because we're truly all in the same boat together and it hurts us all in different ways. And, uh, and let's just keep doing our best and contributing how we can uh, so that we can do it next year or the yeah. year after that, or the year after that. Cause if all the organizers lose their, their pants on this, then, There'll be no more events to go to. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, and mostly the, the organizers have been really cool. The ones that could not offer full refunds, they, there was always a byline in there, usually, that said, um, you know, if, uh, if things are really tight, uh, we understand, although, you know, send us an email to this, like, this is not for the general public, but if, if you're really in a tough situation, send us a note and we can discuss some sort of a full or partial refund. Like, I mean, they're, it's just, everyone's trying to make it make do and, you know, so, yeah. But, mm. but things are opening up again, as far as I can tell, I hope, um, I got, you got to stay optimistic. That's all you can do right now. So true that. Yeah. Tom, you've been so quiet and you're usually so inquisitive. You, you gave that great question. Is there anything else you want to stick to Pete before we start wrapping it up? Well, d did you guys talk about the, the, um, White Rim or what was that? Uh, no, we did not talk about White Rim. That's in the oh. future project. Future, future project. Um, undetermined project. Yes, I I would like to attempt though. I don't know if you hear my dog growling at me. I don't um, know if we can hear it. <laughs> um, the White Rim is, you know, it's it's my big fall objective. I've been sitting on it, and that's like you said, that's kind of been my carrot, getting out on the bike and training, uh, just waiting for Moab to not be a freaking furnace every day. Um, so that's one um, for everyone that's, you know, this is NorCal based. Um, this summer I did the Rose to Toads FKT. And in, the, in my mind, that's Ooh. another um, iconic trail, right? So Rose to Toads goes from uh, the top of Mount Rose in North Lake Tahoe, all along the iconic Flume Trail, the Rim Trail, all the way around South Lake. And it finishes on this downhill trail called Mr. Toads Wild Ride into South Lake Tahoe. It's um, one of the coolest mountain bike trails you can do. It's, uh, it's spiritual, visual, visceral, all of it. And um, uh, Tamba is the local trail network up there. They are the ones that build a lot of our trails. So I talked with them. I you know, brought awareness to the trail work they do to create something as cool as Rose to Toads. Um, and then I went out and, and I set the current bar on it. And then I talked some smack to... Payson and, and Keegan and other mountain bike hitters telling them to like, all right, here's your carrot boys. You want a COVID carrot, come and get it. So um, that's uh, for everyone in NorCal, go ride Rose to Toads. There's my time. Uh, the females time is, um, it hasn't really been focused on yet. So if there's any quick ladies out there. Uh, okay, let's, it. let's, let's give a little caveat. How long did it take you to do the ride? Peter? Uh, what was it? I think it was like five hours and 30 minutes or 520 or something. All right. All right. So um, yeah. let's, let's just give a little comparison here. I have done white rim trail 
three times now in one day, self-supported, carrying, you know, a gallon and a half of water on my back. Uh, my fastest time, not going hard, going with friends, taking a lot of selfies, yeah. um, nine hours. The, the current record time. time, what's that? The funnest known time. That's your the funnest known time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you Keegan the Swenson, FKT. <laughs> yeah. Keegan Svensson's FKT right now stands at five hours and 30 minutes. Yep. Again, I'm no slug. I may be 50 years old, but there's a huge difference between 5.30 and nine hours. So when Peter says he did rose to toads in five and a half hours, just kind of extrapolate out there like, yeah, going to have to eat. It's normally the ride that everyone kind of does on the solstice on the longest day of the year because it's, it's an all day adventure. Um, but it's, it's amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, I think anyone else should, uh, uh, who's watching, you can get up to Tahoe. Now it's nice and quiet. There's not as many trail hikers on, on the rim trail. Um, get a clean run at it. Go for now, it. Now, keep in mind I, also, you, you just sought, sought refuge from the dirty air back down to Santa, Santa Rosa. Rosa you just left. <laughs> I heard, I heard oh. it made its way up there, but. It's bad. I was, yeah. It's, it's uh, over 200 AQI purple zone right now. It's just mm -hmm. settling in the basin um, and around the lake. Um, actually, you know, speaking of incentivizing other mountain bikers and you know you guys had Payson on here earlier right we did and you actually you uh yeah what uh, how did what's the one of that i, I never saw message that. about the mustache yeah and, uh, he, he yeah. threw some uh some social media stuff out after that so i think i think it got to him a little bit but <laughs> i think he basically said your mustache looked good on you i think that's oh, uh, that's nice that's that's a nice cop out <laughs> I, uh, I think it was a left-handed compliment yeah um Hey, I want to finish on a high note. You do a fair bit of riding uh, in our neighborhood. Oh yeah, uh, you've already mentioned the FKT that you did here, the funnest known time. Uh, tell us what a good day riding in Marin is for you. You know what I've, I have mostly done um, road stuff, obviously, in in the years past, and you know the the uh, Seven Sisters and Mount Tam and the Alpine Dam. I love all that. Um, but isn't that one of the best rides you've ever done? It's so good. Um, but what I would really, really like to do, you know, now that the smart train is going from Santa Rosa to Marin, um, and you guys could do it opposite up towards Santa Rosa. So I'll, I'll give you your goal. I, I've been playing I, on this I, myself. Well, what I personally would love to do is an awesome, probably gravel adventure ride, um, but basically from Santa Rosa to Mollus Bay, the whole coast into Point Reyes over Mount Tam. But I would love to basically finish at like, soul food or something i love soul food every time i would come home from sfo airport i would stop there and then you know just load up probably get beers at at um gestalt house or somewhere too and then uh take take the smart train home a point to point ride and you don't even need like ditching a car and support i mean uh but you know you guys could make a rad route going the other way come finish at russian river brewing get some pliny the elder in your belly I take like the smart it. train home <laughs> get on the train got a little buzz on got a full belly take a nap on the way that home. might be like the, the north bay dual dual county we can make a crazy long name like you guys have for this podcast but the north bay dual county funnest known time oh wait wait brewery. not quite the iron horse classic brewery <laughs> to brewery crawl yeah that'll fit on a t-shirt yeah Let's make, make it happen. I love it. <laughs> to have the two point to point, north to south and south to north. There we go. Yeah, we, we really do have an embarrassment of riches here. You, uh, you bring up a good point. You're clearly living the cycling life to the fullest, Peter. I appreciate you taking time to join us today. No worries. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up with my friend Tom Boss. Remind everyone, please go to marinbike.org forward slash lost summer. Enter the giveaway. Mike's Bikes has contributed a 2021 specialized Pro Carbon Diverge that is, is a, uh, equipped with electronic SRAM shifting. It's got the Eagle on the back. It's got 700C wheels with 47 millimeter tires. You can't buy this bike today because the bike industry is sold out of everything. This is your best chance to get a new bike this summer. Uh, it costs $10 per entry. Most of the proceeds go to Marin County Bicycle Coalition, which benefits, benefits us all. Part of the proceeds, also the other 25% goes to Marin Senior Services and the Canal Alliance right here in Marin County. So please contribute. 
uh, $10 per entry, enter as many times as you can. Also prizes available from Velocio Clothing, uh, Easton Cycling's got cockpits, carbon wheels, all this stuff is all part of the giveaway. So please, please, please contribute. Tom, what's the, the newest, the, the upcoming virtual event we have going on? We're doing the Adventure Revival. Is that what you're referring to? Our gravel Correct. event yeah. is underway right now. And you can, uh, that supports Marin County Bicycle Coalition and the NorCal League. And you can jump on that for as little as $50. And for 150 to 250, you can get some, uh, some nice swag. And it's, uh, it really highlights some of the great challenging gravel uh, uh, trails we have here in Marin. All right. Well, this uh, concludes the Marin County Bicycle Coalition Lost Summer Cycling Celebrity series tom and i have been discussing coming back for some more special guests uh pete if we invited you would you come back again yeah <laughs> <laughs> i had to think about it huh? that was well, an awkward pause <laughs> yeah. you, you've helped out you've done you've done your fair share this year pete we appreciate you coming no out i it's, it's so much fun and i hope uh i hope tom we can do another um event in sausalito when uh when it's cool to, to hang out together and that was a lot of fun um Marine gravel is great. Anytime I have an excuse to get down there. So let's do more. Awesome. Right. Thank you. Kumbaya, my friends. Hope to see you again soon. Take care.